Hello, hello friends and loyal Wolfpack members, Chaos Wolf here and welcome back to the channel. Now, at the time of posting, this should be just after Christmas. And I imagine that uh, right now there will be a lot more commanders going around brandishing brand new X-52 Pros. Or even X-52s. I have a feeling this will work pretty much for the X-52 as well as the Pro version, but I want to focus mainly on the Pro, uh, as that is the controller that I do own. But what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at how we go about setting it up for the best, most optimal use with Elite Dangerous. Now, the first port of call is to come here to uh, SciTech.com UK Down Drivers. I'll be putting a link in the video description. Now, the reason we're coming here is the drivers that we get on disk with the X52 Pro, they're pretty much garbage. You do not want to use them. They're outdated. I'm pretty sure they're just for the normal X52, not the Pro version. So what you want to do is you want to come and set, basically choose your product, which is the Pro Flight. We're going to be working with the X52 Pro, and then you go and choose your operating system. I have Windows 7, basically Windows 7 64-bit, so that's the one I would choose. Now you need to download both the drivers and the software the drivers to run the device and the software in order so we can reprogram a few problems. Because as it stands, there will be some conflicts between your X52 Pro and Elite Dangerous. So this is how we go about fixing that. So after you've downloaded and installed both of these, uh, come back and we'll take a look and see what we need to do. I don't need to show you how to install these because it's pretty straightforward. You can just set them, uh, the recommended installs. Okay, so by this point, you should have installed both the drivers and the software. And uh, what we need to do is, in order to go and get the most out of this, we need to come here to the Show More Icons tab. And you'll see a brand new little icon here, which is the SciTech X52 Pro Control System. It looks just like the throttle, so you right-click it. And we need to go to uh, Profile Editor. So we click here. Comes up with the Mad Cats. And you should see this. You'll have, if this is the first time you are using this, there'll be another little pop up. You can click the don't show this on startup and close it. But where we need to go is into programming. And the main problem is, I'll just scroll back to the top here. For some reason, that was down the bottom. Because uh, what happens is when you basically click here, you can see what all the different buttons do. Okay, so the buttons that we are interested in are these ones here the mouse fire equals left mouse button. We need to go and uh, change these ones. So it's this one, this one, this one, and this one. Basically all the ones with little icons in there. These, if you notice, are the ones that don't work when using the X52 Pro with Elite Dangerous. So what we need to do is go and just click Do Nothing. As soon as all those icons are removed, what you need to do then is just come up here and click Save As. Now you have to save this in a very specific location. Uh, it's going to be C, Users, Public, Public Documents, Smart Technology Profiles. So after you've come here, you need to make a new folder called Profiles V3. You open here and you can save it in here as whatever the hell you want. I save mine as Elite Dangerous because that's what I'm using it with. So you come in here, you click Save. Uh, it's coming up here saying, do I want to replace it? It won't say this for you because I, you won't have already done this. So I'm going to click no and cancel, uh, because like I said, I've done this previously. So you can now close the programming tool. If it comes up with this little box here, it means you haven't saved and you have to go back and basically save it. Like I said, I have, I've already done it previously, so this time it's, I don't need to, so I'm going to click no. And then what I need to do is you need to come back down here to the show hidden icons, re-right click on the little throttle. Go up to Profiles V3 and click on whatever you have saved your profile as. Mine's called Elite Dangerous, so I click that. And when you open it up again, you will see that your throttle little icon is, it has a green background. That shows that you've got a profile loaded. Now, this isn't quite enough to get this to work properly because, in, in fact, this will actually cause a few more additional problems. Uh, what you'll find is that the pinky switch no longer works. Uh, so what you need to do is you need to come here, click uh, Control Panel, and pretty much that's all you need to do. 
just have the control panel running in the background. I don't know why this does this, but that's how it works. Uh, it's also where you can set your dead zones. I've set in a few here. The main one is on the Z axis, which is the throttle. Because I have this set to full range throttle rather than uh, ahead only. So the little dead zone in the middle gives me a nice little bit of leeway so that uh, I don't have to be on the exact nanometer in the middle to in order to, st <laughs> to stay still. I'm not constantly going forward one or back one meter per second. Uh, you can also change the colors of your LEDs on the uh, the exit to change their brightness, uh, change your clock and so on. That displays on the throttle and you just general information. So that's what you can do there. You don't click OK. You can click Apply after changing things, but don't click OK because that will close it. You need to have this running in the background. If you accidentally close it, just come down here, right click again and show control panel. That's it. Okay, so that now we're going to assume that you've done all this fine. And what we're going to go do now is we're going to go and jump into the game and have a look at how we go and set it up in uh, basically game side. So I'll see you in a minute. Alrighty, so by this point, like I said, you should have everything installed and running the way it should be. So what we need to do now is go and set up the controller in game. And we do this by going to options and controls. Now, mine says up here custom because I have changed things a little bit, but what you need to do is you need to click on the downward arrow and go to the Cytec X52 Pro. So you click on that and it will change your, your settings. So let's go and do that. And what you can see is it shows now little icons of basically what kind of motion you need to make on your controllers in order to get this to work. Uh, the yaw axis is by default set to the uh, twist grip on the throttle. Not on the throttle, sorry, on the control stick, on the flight stick. You've got roll axis, which is basically tilting side to side. Uh, pitch axis, which is tilting up and down. Uh, invert axis is set to on as default, which I think is the correct flight way of doing it. So when you pull back, you pitch up, and when you uh, tilt forward, you pitch down. Uh, in the lateral thrust section, you will have thrust left, thrust right, thrust up and thrust down. Now these are the little hat uh, controller that is on the throttle. So it's up, down, left, right, all pretty much as it's supposed to be. Now if we control, scroll down even, you can see flight throttle. This is the next most important one. Flight throttle access, that is set to the throttle. Invert axis is on as default, so that's fine. That means throttling all the way forward is forward and back is throttling down or reverse, depending on how you have it set. Now, as default, you have forward only. Now, that, that, what that means is throttled all the way back is full stop. Throttling all the way forward means ahead full. But what I do is I like to have this set to full range. So... Uh, Basically, having the throttle set in the middle is stop, all the way back is reverse, and all the way forward is go forward. I don't like to muck around with um, uh, with having to press a button to swap between going forward and going backwards. I much prefer it this way. Uh, granted, having full range forward and full range back, uh, just have it set to forward only, can be useful in some situations, but I do just prefer it this way around. So what I do is I go and set, I press escape to unbind that one and have it set to full range. Now this is why I have my dead zone set. So like I said, not this one here, but the one on the controller itself. So that in the center, uh, I have a little bit more leeway to be set to full zero. Now the next section we need to have a look at is flight miscellaneous and toggling flight assist. Now, uh, as default, it is set to the little scroll wheel button. That's what this icon is, is the scroll wheel button on the flight stick, on, on the flight stick, on the flight throttle. And it's usually set to toggle, but I like to have that set to hold. So in order to hold it down, in order to have flight assist off, you have to hold it down. So if you automatically, if you let go, it automatically turns on flight assist again. So that's why I like to have engine boost. That is default to the I button. So that is fine. Basically, frame shift drive is T3, which is the center toggle pulling up. So that is fine. You can change these to whatever you want. Targeting is the next most important. Target head is the B button. Uh, that's I've still got this as standard on mine. So that's all standard for me still. I don't need to change it. 
So left and right on the little hat, which has the raised edges, uh, left and right is target the next and previous targets, up and down is only the hostile. So that these ones will target everything in your rear contacts panel. This one will only target anything that is showing up as red. Or whatever colour if you have a uh, unique uh, HUD colour. Basically, all this one will only target through the or cycle through the hostile targets. But I'm waffling now, so let's move on. I do have my gun sight set uh, system set to trailing, which I find much better for fixed weapons such as cannons and uh, plasma accelerators. Anything where the projectile has a travel time, I do find this more useful. Some people prefer leading; that's fine. Just use what you're more comfortable with. But I do find this more useful for plasma accelerator weapons. Uh, this is all the same, I do believe. Yes, primary and secondary fire is the same. Cycle next fire group. Now, this is where I have changed something. I have changed this to A, rather than what it was previously. Originally, it was one of the toggle switches. But that means in order to change next fire group, I have to let go of my flight stick to go and change the, uh, to go and change the uh, fire group. And that's not great if you're in the heat of combat. So I have changed this to A. Cycle previous, I don't have this because I don't use so many uh, fire groups that I can't just cycle through them again. At most, I have about four. Uh, deploying hard points, that is the button in the middle, one of the uh, little safety latch over the top of it. And firing deploys hard points. I have this set to on. Sometimes this is set to off by some people, but in Horizons, if you want to use the scanner, on the SRV, you need to have this set to on. Otherwise, for some reason, it just will not work. Pressing the button to deploy your hard points doesn't actually work. Uh, silent running is T5. I think I've got this exactly the same as well. Uh, deploying heatsink. I have this set to something completely different. I have this set to X52 Pro button 16, which is pretty much the mouse press button on the throttle. Uh, miscellaneous lights, I've got pretty much the same, I think. No, I don't. I have that set to... There we go, T1. That's the one I have it set to. Uh, sensor zoom access, I don't have this set here either, so we're going to get rid of that one. That is in another miscellaneous section. Uh, power to engines, weapon systems, and uh, balance power, that is all the same. I have not changed this. Uh, cargo scoop, I have changed this one, I believe. No, I haven't. That is still set as standard. Just an all cargo, I've un undone this one because we don't want this. Landing gear, yes, that's the same for me. Doopy doopy doo. Shield cell bank, now this is what I have set to button D. So instead of having button D as toggle between forward and reverse, I have this set to my shield cell bank. Now a lot of commanders are asking me how you go and set about sets up shield cells and chaff launchers and so on to not to have to use a fire group. This is how you do it. You come in here and it is under the where are we? It's under the miscellaneous section, closer to the bottom. It's pretty much just above the uh, the mode switches. Now the next one is chaff launcher. Now I have this one set to the same button that was used for changing the sensitivity of your uh, of your scanner. So it is a it is a slide bar. So I just slide it up, slide it back, and that deploys my chaff. I like to have it set this way so I don't have to let go of my controller uh, hardly ever. It's very rare I have to let go of either my uh, flight stick or my throttle to do anything. The next one is the mode switches. UI focus is the pinky switch. This is the one you pull with your little finger on the throttle, on the throttle, on the flight stick side. I have this set to standard. I don't have this changed at all. So what happens is when you pull the pinky switch, you can then use the same button that you use for looking around left, right, up, down, depending on what you want to look at, which, which menu you want to have a look at. And then you can look with that one. So left will be over into like the contact side and uh, navigation. Right will be over like to the ship functions and so on. Down will be to your SRV and ship uh, panel and up is going to be into the comms panel. Now the next one is the E key. That is the big button over on your throttle and this is I have it set to headlock. 
if you press this one and you have it set to set to standard, uh, when you when you basically toggle it on, you can press that, and instead of changing your power priorities or looking at the uh, different menus, you can then use the same hat, the one that you use to change your power priorities, to look around the cockpit. You can still use the mouse as well if you want, uh, but that's completely up to you. And then toggling it back is pressing the E button again. You can set this so that the secondary button is your mouse 3 button, which is your mouse wheel, so that you can just press it, use the mouse to look around, but it's up to you. I don't have this set because I have a head tracker, and uh, I use this in conjunction with head tracking. Now here, when you are looking at your panels, like uh, whether it be your contacts panel or your functions panel, uh, left and right on the hat on your control stick, with the one with the raised edges, we've been talking about this a few times now, but left and right on that one switches between tabs. So if you're looking up at the chat panel, this is how you go between the different tabs and go, and go to select the, uh, the wing section and so on. Uh, this is pretty much the basics that you need. Now, I could go on about the driving section, but I've already covered that in a previous video. Uh, so that's controlling the S, that's the video called Controlling the SRV with the X52 Pro. Or something along those lines. You'll be able to go and have a look at that, and I do go a little bit more in depth where I have the cameras showing you how I go and do things. So I'm not going to go and recover that again. But anyway guys, I do hope that this video has proven useful. I'm not going to go click apply, so if you want, after you've made done all your changes, you can click apply. I'm not going to because I have my own custom setup now. So after you've done that, you will be able to use your X52 Pro to its fullest potential. And uh, I do hope that you enjoy the freedom that it offers. It really does. It is a great controller and it really does increase the, the sense of immersion you have in the game. But anyway, I do hope you've enjoyed the video. If so, please do hit those like and subscribe buttons because they really do help my channel out. And anyway, Commanders, until next time, I've been Commander Chaos Wolf, you've been Epic, I will see you soon. Until then, keep flying and stay shiny.